Hello, everyone, and welcome to the spring series of Out to Lunch. Uh, my name is Margaret Mooney, and I'm on the East of Education Committee. And we have these short webinars that we're offering uh, where someone demonstrates a cool earth science tool very succinctly, usually about 10 minutes, and then short Q&A. Today we have the Executive Director of NESTA, Carla McAuliffe, who is going to be presenting on Image J. Hi, Carla. Thanks for presenting. Thank you very much. Uh, can you hear me all right? Yep. Okay, perfect. Uh, so today I'm just going to give you a small uh, slice into what Image J is capable of doing and how you can use Image J to analyze some earth science data. Specifically, we'll be looking at some Landsat images of Lake Mead. Um, so, hang on a second here. Oh. I advanced my own slides. Okay. Um, for those of you who may or may not be familiar, Image J is a public domain image processing and analysis program. It was developed by the National Institutes of Health, NIH, primarily for biomedical use but its use in the scientific realm has expanded across uh, multiple disciplines. Um, I've got some resources here for you that I put in the chat window. Um, Image J is um, being supported, but it's no longer, be, the development of it is no longer continuing at the National Institutes of Health, uh, but this is a very robust piece of software that's been around for a long, long time, and uh, there's a lot of curriculum materials that have been developed around it. So I would encourage you to use the version that is still sitting there at the National Institutes of Health. There are other developers, because it's all in the public domain and the source code is free, there are other developers who have taken and run with it and have developed various other versions of ImageJ. So you can find um, newer versions with more scientific capabilities and features, but for teaching, this one works really well. And with that, I'm going to go to a few of these uh, resources for you, and then we'll actually get into Image J and do a little analysis. So, as I mentioned, um, Image J is from the National Institutes of Health. There's a whole bunch of documentation here. Um, it explains the ins and outs of using it. A little bit dry, but you you might want to refer to the original documentation. Um, in terms of resource materials that are curriculum based, um, the Eyes in the Sky program developed uh, a whole online course for teaching with geospatial information technology. And in particular, module one of the course, which I gave you the link to, is all about using image data. And in the first couple of weeks, it focuses on image J. So the particular technique I'm going to show you today is completely documented here in week two using image J parts one and two. So if you wanted to go back and try what I'm going to demonstrate, you have the images and there are all the instructions. There's little embedded videos that show you how to use image J um, in these materials. So there's the um, eyes in the sky materials. There are also um, a set of image analysis modules that were created in another website for another project I had called Earth Analysis Techniques. I gave you that link so you can explore that later. And then there are um, <clears throat> something called the Earth Exploration Toolbook, which has a number of chapters. And if you search on image analysis, you'll get chapters that have image J. It'll tell you if it uses image J in it, but these are again another set of materials that you can look at and use. So um, what we're going to look at today, um, I have an older set of images that I'm going to use just because they're smaller, but later if you want to try this out, these are um, really high quality images from 1984 and 2016. Um, Landsat photos showing uh, the greater Lake Mead area, and this is a young Las Vegas in 1984. And then you'll see in 2016, we have far less water in Lake Mead, and we have 
uh, the growing, ever-growing Las Vegas city here. So this is, um, we're going to be using two other images of this data. We're going to use a 2000 and 2004 set, but if you want to try this later, you can. Given the size of these images, um, I crashed image J a little earlier, so I, I don't want to use these particular ones right now. And with that, I'm launching image J. You can see um, there's a very simple little um, menu bar and toolbar up at the top. We're going to Ma make some measurements on this image, on this set of images here. So this first image that I have um, is from, let me just get off of that tool, is from 2000. And it's a TIFF image, a tagged image file format. And ImageJ can handle TIFFs, it can handle JPEGs. ImageJ is a raster base image processing um, program. What that basically means is that the images that it uses are made up of little pixels. And we can zoom into the picture elements or the pixels and see that um, that's what the image is made of. Unlike a vector-based program where you can zoom in um, forever. So uh, I have here the 2000 image and I have the 2004 image. And what we're going to do first to um, make this easier to work with is we're going to take these images and we're going to put them into a stack. So I do that simply by going here, images to stack, and um, I'm just going to let it be the way it is there. So now I can flip back and forth easily between these images to look at the change that's happened in the reduction of water in Lake Mead. This is in 19 or in 2000, and this is in 2004. In order to quantify, we can just visually observe that, yeah, it's less. But in order to quantify this, what we'd like to do is to actually measure the area of the water in Lake Mead as best we can. There's going to be a margin of error in this. If we tried to trace around this, uh, we'd probably be pretty inaccurate. That's one way that you can make measurements in MHJs. You can actually just draw. The, the feature that you want to measure and analyze it. But we have um, some tools here that can help us out. Before we do that, we'd like to measure it in something other than pixels. So to do that, um, I need to set a scale for this image, or you can get an image that already has a scale in it. But in this particular case, I do know the known distance between these islands here. So I can set a scale using that distance. I'm not coordinated here. Okay, and we're going to set a scale. And I know that that distance is 25.4 kilometers. Uh, and I'm going to change the unit to kilometers. And I'm going to say OK. And now you can see that my image is given up here as 83.36 kilometers, um, square kilometers, okay? So what we're gonna do now is we'd like to, since we've set a scale on the image, any measurements we make will be in kilometers and in square kilometers, and we're gonna measure the area. To do that, we're gonna use this little uh, wand tool, and we need to, it, what the wand tool is going to do is it's going to pick up a range of pixel values within the feature that you want to measure. And since this is all dark, it should be fairly easy for us to measure this using the wand tool. Um, okay, so I'm going to grab it, put it in here. Okay, and you can see that we didn't get all of it. So if I hold the shift key down, I can pick up other areas here that have water and add it to my selection. And that looks pretty good. And so we're going to say analyze, measure. And when we do that, I'm going to show the results here. Let me see. Let's see in my results window. Hang on a second. It's already open. Oh, I should have cleaned out my measurements. Sorry about that. I was messing around earlier. So the area is 416 are 516 kilometers squared. Um, we want to do the same thing for the 2004 image. So I'm going to advance my slide. 
And I need to get rid of that because that is the selection for 1984, or I'm sorry, for 2000. And so I'm gonna take my wand tool again, and I'm gonna click and pick up the pieces that I don't have. Oops, definitely I'm gonna start over, sorry. My wand tool can be unforgiving. Okay, and I'm going to measure this again, and we'll see that there has been a clear loss of water. Uh, there's a set of images that students can use in, in the Landsat data set that take them through many different years. Um, and you can often find these, these data sets that show the change over time uh, for other, other features on Earth. Um, the last thing I just wanted to briefly show you is that you can use ImageJ to automate processes. So if I wanted to um, have this image label and measure and label at the same time, we can run something called um, a macro. We can write a macro, which basically says rather than doing things individually, rather than doing measure and then label, you can uh, put these commands together and have it do the two things together. And so all that did was it added a number, but if I was measuring a whole bunch of features, I might want to automatically measure and have them labeled in my image. Uh, and that's, that's all I have. I think I'm two minutes over, nope, maybe one. I'll pass it back to Margaret. Thanks, Carla, that was amazing. Everyone is unmuted, so if anyone wants to speak now, they can. You have to turn on your own microphone. There's also the uh, chat box. Carla, can I ask you a question about the macro? So when you Absolutely. put run measure and then run label, did it, the measurement, is it, did it do, did it measure the water in Lake Mead based on the wand tool? Yes, it did. You still have to have a selection. In okay. Order to run that. So you can see that it gave the same repeated uh, measurement there. Cool. So the the added value there is if you're doing something um, across a whole bunch of images and or you have a, a bunch of features that you wanted to identify, uh, then you can do measure and label together without intensively doing that, um, doing those two commands separately. In other words. It is just a really tiny insight into macros. You can do a lot more complicated macros than this. Yeah, I can tell this is the tip of the iceberg, but looks like a pretty cool iceberg. <laughs> and uh, I wanna play with that macro. Does anyone have any questions for Carla? Uh, I have the same question as Becky. I didn't see any of the links uh, posted in the chat box. Thank you. I think you just scroll up or down with the up or down arrow because I actually missed um, <laughs> Becky's. Do, do I need to put them in there again? No, they're in there. I think if they use their up or down arrow, they'll see them. Oh yeah, they're um, right. Could someone try no, that? If, if you uh, logged in after the uh, links were put in, you don't see the previous material. I see. Yeah. Can I, can I so just copy, it, copy and paste? Thanks, Carla. Um, I'm trying to get coordinated. I think I'm getting everybody's chat just a minute. And I think they can be uh, posted on our Out to Lunch page, too. Yes, I was thinking the same thing. But if somebody wants to do it right now. <laughs> there you yeah, go. My PowerPoint is only two slides, but I really wanted you to have those links so you could go to the data. And I don't think you post the PowerPoints usually, or do you? I can. I'm, okay. I can, you know, if you send them to me, Carla, I'll post them. Okay. Or you can post them, I think, but I'm happy to do it. Okay. This is a super cool tool. I barely <laughs> showed you much, but. <laughs> and the uh, doc, it's so well documented. Yeah. Well, I'm, the, I'm, I, you know, just a, a plug for, the, this was a wonderful uh, NASA grant that we had years ago, but I will tell you that these, um, these modules, these materials that we created really do stand up. There's a lot of stuff here. There are um, video tutorials embedded in there. Carla, this well, is Bob Murray. 
Pardon me? Bonnie Murray. Hi, Bonnie. Hi, Carla. I just wanted to say hi and say thank you to Margaret for sending out information about this because I read it and I thought, oh, this goes way back in time. I need to connect and see how things are still going. So really happy to see that um, this program is still being promoted. Good job. Yeah, it's still, it's very robust. Like I said, you can, and you can get uh, the latest, greatest version that a scientist has added about 100 macros to, uh, but this one that's still sitting there at the National Institutes of Health is, like I said, very robust. It is. Great to see you demonstrating it, Carla. Thanks. Oh, well, thank you. All right, if we don't have any more questions or comments, I'd like to remind you that in two weeks we'll have a similar, um, I mean, actually I haven't seen it yet, but some of my colleagues created something called SIFT, and it was created specifically for uh, the GOES R satellite series, and they think it's a pretty cool tool for animate, or for analyzing satellite data from these new geostationary satellites. So we'll see. It'll be hard to top this one. But please tune in in two weeks, and thank you, everyone, and thank you, Carla, for presenting. Thank you. Thanks, Carla. Thanks, Margaret. Bye. Thank you. Let's see, Margaret, do I have to pass this back to you? No, no I'll close it. <laughs>